Financial Planner, Flow Us on YouTube. It's coming and the Fed can't do anything about it. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, we talked about job openings before and the U.S. job openings, that information came out today. And after two consecutive months of record high job openings, all of a sudden, job openings started to head the other way. And the total number of job openings falling in August from about 6.14 million to about 6.08 million below the 6.1 the 6.125 million. Now, what's very interesting about all of this is that we've seen this pattern once before where the job hires versus the 12 month cumulative change in payrolls, well, when it starts heading the opposite way. Now, if we look back in 2006 going into 2007, we can see that we hit the top of the 12 month job change and the hires where there are openings and people are getting hired. And then all of a sudden the openings and the hirees, they started to fall. They started to decline. Here we are in 2017, we've hit the peak and now we see the job openings and the people that are being hired doing the same exact thing where it is declining right now which means this is another indicator letting us know that we are heading into some type of recession, some type of depression. Now, we know a lot of the jobs out there, they're completely fake, phony, and false. The numbers are fake, phony, and false. And what they've been showing us is that we're repeating what happened back in 2007 going into 2008. This is what we've been seeing right now. Now, everything that we've seen in 2008, well, it's exactly pretty much the same, but it's a lot worse in some respects because what is happening here is that they didn't fix anything. All these numbers and everything they're throwing at us, it's all been manipulated to make us believe that something is a lot better than it was back in 2008, that they fixed the crisis problem, which they have not. All they did was blow up many bubbles all over the place. They manipulated all the statistical numbers and they're trying to convince us that everything is great, but we're starting to see all these indicators come out and everything's starting to turn around. Now we know we have this major, major pension problem here in the US and Europe also has this pension problem. And we know that uh, Connecticut has a problem, Kentucky has a problem, and many other states, they all have the same exact problem. Now, Kentucky's teacher retirement system saw a 64% surge in teacher re uh, retirements year on year in the month of September. And what is happening there is basically that the pension crisis is going nuclear because a lot of people are taking their retirement funds right now. Now, the problem is, is that they're not going to have enough to pay out. Now, the Kentucky Retirement System reported this week that 677 state and local government employees across Kentucky have submitted notices they will retire this month, an increase of about 23% over the 551 retirements that they saw back uh, last October. Now, the increase is quite substantial right now. And what is happening right now is they don't know what to do about this problem. And they're looking at the situation saying that some of the people, they might have to take a cut to their payments. Those people who are already retired, those existing retirees, they might have to take a cut and force most current and future hires into the 401k style retirement plans because they don't have enough money. And again, these are all Ponzi schemes because they expected a return of about 7 to 8% and they haven't been getting that for eight to nine years. That's what their model is based on. And the whole thing does not work. They're all underfunded. And this is a huge, huge problem. Now, the Fed has been talking about inflation for quite a while. They're telling us, you know, how inflation is very low. They need to push inflation up and they need to get it under control. And of course, the opposite is actually happening. Now, they want us to believe that there is no inflation, but what they're really afraid of is inflation. Now, 
we know a lot of the Fed houses, they've been looking at, you know, the calculation of inflation and they're coming up with all different numbers, 3.1, 3.0, and they're saying that inflation is much higher than it really is. Well, the Fed discovered that its official measures of inflation, CPI and PCE, do a horrible job of predicting future inflation. So what does predict future inflation accurately? You're never going to believe this. Food prices. Food prices predict future inflation accurately over the years. Now, we see that past inflation in food prices has been a better forecast of future inflation than has the popular core measure. Comparing the past year's inflation in food prices to the prices of other components that comprise the PCEPI, we find that the food component still ranks the best among them all. So the Fed has admitted that its official inflation measure do not accurately predict future inflation. The Fed admitted that food prices are a much better predictor of future inflation. In fact, food prices were a better predictor of inflation than the Fed's PCE, non-durable goods, transportation services, housing, clothing, energy, and more. Put simply, if you want to predict the inflation well, all you need to do is look at food. Look at food, beverage. Just look at what has been going on in the real world. Remember, they've been offloading inflation into real estate, into the stock market, into college tuition, overseas. And we can see right now, inflation is picking up. Because what have we been seeing with food prices? They've been continually moving up. Even when fuel prices came down, if you notice, food prices didn't drop the same amount as they went up when fuel prices went up. Because real food, and I'm not talking that chemically altered food where they throw it into a box and they pretend this is real food and everything is completely made out of chemicals. I'm talking about natural food. And I'm not talking about GMOs either. I'm talking about natural food continually moves up a lot quicker than a can of SpaghettiOs, for instance. Now, a lot of people say, well, why does fresh food, why does that price continually move up while the other food stays very low? Actually, we should be asking the opposite. Why does the fake food, why are they able to keep that price so low while the real food continues to move up in price? Because again, it's real. They create the fake food to make everyone believe that the food prices are stable and most of it's chemical. It's not real food. If we got rid of all that food and we went with just real food, we would have a problem in this country and around the world because what they've been doing is they've been substituting all this food. So we have been seeing inflation in real food prices and actually the cost of milk and other products, they're moving up once again. And they moved up, they moved down, but overall, they continually move up. And the problem is the Fed is very worried about this. They know they can't do anything about inflation. They can't stop it. And as more countries start to use other currencies and they don't use the dollar and they start to sell treasuries, we're going to see more dollars in circulation here in the country, which means that we're going to see inflation, which means the dollar loses its value, which we've been seeing, and the products, it takes more dollars to buy that same product. And this is what we're going to see as we move forward. And eventually what's going to happen is that this is going to break out and the Fed can do absolutely nothing about this. What they're going to try to do is they're going to try to create more currency, which which is going to make the situation even worse. And there's going to be more countries that are continually dumping the dollar and using their own currencies. And those are going to float back to the United States and more of this currency is going to be floating back to the United States. And we're going to see even more inflation. And before you know it, the whole thing gets completely out of hand. And before you know it, we're seeing major inflation. Now it's going to start off very slowly and we're going to see this creep up 
over time. We're already starting to see this where they're already saying that inflation is much higher. I mean, if they're doing their calculations, if they're looking at food, we could see that it's continually moving up and up and up. And once we get to that point where people really take notice, this is when people are going to get very, very nervous. This is when they're going to run to the market. This is when people are going to be standing outside trying to get that loaf of bread, the meat and whatever they're trying to get, because we saw meat prices, they've just skyrocketed over time. Actually, if you go out to dinner at restaurants, their food prices have gone up. This is why the traffic in restaurants has been declining because a lot of people have no job or they have a part-time job and they can't afford the prices of food in these restaurants. And we can see that this is all going to take its toll eventually. It's just a matter of time. And this is why the Fed is continually talking about inflation how they want to boost inflation. Remember, it's always the opposite of what they're telling us. If they give us, like the government, if they give us the Affordable Care Act, well, it's the opposite. If it's the Patriot Act, it's the opposite. If the Fed is telling us that there is no crisis ahead, it is the opposite. If they're not forecasting any recession anytime soon, it is the opposite. So whatever they're saying, it is always the opposite. They always tell you the opposite before the storm hits. And we're starting to see that the storm is going to hit. And we're starting to see many, many signs that are showing that we are headed in this direction. This is why you need to be ready and prepared.